The worst of the weather moved south today to Essex, where 200 schools were closed. Up to five inches of snow fell overnight. There was severe disruption on the A12 and in parts of Suffolk. Felicity Simper is on the A12 now. Felicity. Well, yes, I mean, thankfully the roads seem to be a lot quieter this evening. People seem to be trying to stay off them, and it is bitterly cold here. But after the snow that we saw in Norfolk and Suffolk yesterday, Essex certainly seems to have bared the brunt of the worst of the weather today. Thousands of pupils being sent home from schools all across the county. Across the rest of the region, though, only a handful of schools actually closed. Now, they've told us that 20 schools, at least in Essex, have already confirmed that they're going to be shut tomorrow. On the roads, according to the fire service, to Despite it being so cold, there haven't actually been any major road accidents that have been weather-related, despite the county being covered in so much snow. Autumn seemed like a distant memory. Today, it felt more like the depths of winter. Snow covered Essex overnight. In some places, it was four inches deep. And this morning, it caused gridlock on many of the major roads. There were reports of people stuck on the A12 for up to an hour and a half. We've done as much as we can, but one of the problems was the snow came down on, you know, on top of the grit and you need movement uh, to get the salt to work into the, you know, and, and do its job. And so a lot of cars you know, came to halt. For the schools, it wasn't much better. Nearly 200 shut across the county after problems with ice and transport for pupils. After shutting just after midday, some staff at the Anglo-European school in Ingatestone had a three-mile walk home. Of course, it is a frustration, but it's more of a frustration when we get the publicity that schools close at the drop of the hat, because, of course, that's not the case at all. Uh, many decisions have to be made, and decisions have to be made on local conditions. But it wasn't all bad. Elsewhere, snow meant boys got to play with their toys. Uh, building a snowman, um, as a well know there's lots of snow hopefully uh, our work won't find out about it and see our diggers on the right to us and uh, without it we'd be lost <laughs> and despite more snow falling in Suffolk this afternoon roads seem to be running smoothly it looks like what fell on Essex is likely to freeze tonight well, although there have been such cold conditions here today, the ambulance service have told us that throughout the day, most people have remained fairly unscathed. They've been called out to a number of people who have been slipping over on ice, so just fairly minor injuries going on there. Now, before I go, don't forget, if you want information on the weather, the travel news and school closures, tune in to your BBC local radio station tomorrow morning. They'll be up bright and early to give you all that information. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Felicity. Well, many areas in the region were prepared for snow, but never saw very much. Here's Alex. Thanks, Stuart. Well, it's this front to the south of the country that produced an organised line of snow showers to the south of us, and they edged into Essex and parts of Suffolk. The interesting thing about this chart, though, are the isobars. They're pretty much at right angles across us, indicating some strong easterly winds. So the air doesn't have as much of the North Sea to travel across, so it doesn't have as much chance to pick up as much moisture and form those big snow showers. I'll be back later with some more details on the weather forecast. Alex, thank you very much indeed. Still to come... To Campaigners trying to save RAF Marham in Norfolk have taken their fight to Downing Street. They were there to hand in a petition of nearly 37,000 signatures collected in just a fortnight. In driving snow, MPs and councillors from Norfolk, along with one MP from Suffolk, delivered the petition to Downing Street. 36,751 signatures have been collected, twice the number that had called for the A11 to be jewelled. I think it reflects the absolute passion for the people of Norfolk to keep RAF Marham as an operational RAF base because if it closes we will have no RAF presence in Norfolk. For the last fortnight there has been an intensive campaign to highlight the importance of RAF Marham. On paper it makes sense to keep the base open but the show of support in favour of RAF Lossiemouth led MPs to fear that the decision will be influenced by next year's Scottish elections. So today they also went to the MOD to put their case to the Defence Secretary. One thing the Secretary of State said is he'd heard the arguments 20 times and I think that's good because it means the message is getting through. And now what we need to do is make sure that that's 
true in the Treasury as well, and the Prime Minister is fully aware of the arguments, because what I don't want is a decision being made on political grounds without considering the proper economic circumstances. There are a number of pieces in this jigsaw. British troops returning from Germany need somewhere to go. RAF Lucas in Scotland could be on the closure list. And closing Lossiemouth would create big problems in a depressed part of Scotland. The mood music here keeps changing. A couple of weeks ago, people close to the MOD were telling me that Marham was safe. Then they said it might not be. Now they say the case is clearly understood, but they can't second guess what the Defence Secretary may decide. The campaign for Marham can't try any harder. Now it must wait for a decision due early in the new year. Andrew Sinclair, BBC Look East, Westminster. A man whose son died at the home of TV presenter Michael Barrymore has asked Essex Police to interview the entertainer again. As part of a forthcoming television documentary, Mr Barrymore has admitted feeling morally responsible for Stuart Lubbock's death. No one has ever faced charges. A council in Suffolk has been successful in recruiting dozens of volunteers to grit its minor roads free of charge. The appeal was made two weeks ago by Sudbury Town Council and now people living on some roads in the town have decided to join together to buy their own. Corporal Lily Close in Sudbury wasn't originally part of the road gritting scheme. But the residents here thought it was such a good idea they all chipped in £2 to buy their own salt bin. Well, last year it was just like an ice rink down here, um, just solid ice, wasn't it? You know, so uh, we decided we'd have a go. I mean, we spoke to the um, Suffolk County Council last year, and the attitude was, "Well, you're not on a hill, so no luck. We're not sending a grit lorry down." A fortnight ago, Sudbury Town Council appealed for 200 volunteers to monitor the bins and spread the salt. <laughs> The idea came about after local people every winter complained the side roads and paths weren't gritted. Now they're being given guidance on how and when to grit them. Well, hopefully we've had two roads on board so far, both got the grit boxes, and we've got another two or three roads inquired about it, so hopefully after today we might get some more going, which obviously will relieve the pressure on the council. The volunteers here are happy to do this for free. They can guarantee their roads and paths will be clear. If not, they'll know who to blame. Debbie Tubby, Beeps at